There's a part of the two doors, the bar 200 feet away down the street. So there's too many right there together. And I don't disagree with you. That's a legislative thing that you're correct. One last one before that, Jim. Can we just have to deal with the food? It's about the hot stuff. It's usually a call volume brand. It actually is. What are the conditions that you want? I'll speak with you. 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 But clearly there's police evidence that obviously ours are problematic. We know that. But that's not enough to stop them from getting out of Well, we have these people in a little different position because they don't have a way to commit yet. But at the same time, they don't have one yet. Well, they're operating under the old liquor permit. They applied for the liquor police permit. We objected to it. We objected to it predominantly because they hadn't gone through the conditional use application process. So now they're going through the conditional use application process. And, and how long ago was that? What we're hearing, I think, was, uh, I'm going to guess, before Thanksgiving. Might have been just after Thanksgiving. Shouldn't you have notice within that 90 days after the meeting or something like that? The agreement that we made at that point in time was that they were to make their application for conditional use. And the hearing officer has agreed to stay his decision until after this board could review the conditional use application. Thank you. And they continued it then from January's meeting to this meeting. And I can't recall why, but I sent a letter to the hearing officer advising him that we're not going to let it that we would not have that the hearing on the conditional use application until February. So he's waiting for my response. So basically, they almost prolonged it a month or two. By they've been operations. operating. They have been operating. Yeah, that's um, what I'm saying is they extended their operation another month or two per se. And I'm not here to hide words. They were told to be good and to run a upfront business. And I had a police officer sit next to me as well as the clerk of uh, council. So they had plenty of forewarning that they should try to run a ship shape operation. Sure. And there's been how many calls since then? <laughs> well, there's quite a few. But it, it, more importantly, I guess, if Blair may, I'm assuming everybody's read the security protocol that was sent. Mm -hmm. Okay, we had Lieutenant Park went up over the weekend on the 7th at 2.30 in the morning and spoke with Mike Weaver. Um, and there's a copy of the email, I think I gave it to Mr. Weber, but I'm not 100% sure. That says, uh, they went up there because their, their protocol says they're gonna have 14 cameras. He has eight cameras inside of the bar that are not working. He stated he needs a new modem which is scheduled to be installed this weekend. He has no cameras outside of the building, but he does have that scheduled to be installed when the weather permits. Since the cameras do not work, all the other questions regarding the cameras are null at this time. He does have a permit to serve food. It was photographed and attached to this email. I think it was provided in the package. Yeah. He has one contract as security officer, off duty university circle officer who works when needed. He was not working this weekend, that was Saturday night. Um, Mr. Weaver is unsure if the officer is bonded through our city. If he's unsure, I can guarantee you he's not. There's a whole process that has to be gone through. Uh, he does have employees who work the doors with the security officer. He was advised that the cameras are working before the end of the weekend to contact our department and we would verify they were working and recording. Um, he never called back. One more question. At, at the same time, don't all officers that work <coughs> off premise on a restaurant liquor for a liquor li liquor license don't they have to be insured by that person's insurance also somehow some way or through the some some way through your union? If they're, if they're, the well, we don't have we will, our officers aren't allowed to work bars, but generally what happens is when you work for any any agency like there or any bar or any kind of company like this, you're contracted out. So either one of two things could happen. They can employ the individual, in which case the business would be responsible then for the bonding, et cetera. Okay. Or if they're contracting it out, as most cases are, like the guys you see at Giant Eagle and stuff, they're either working with a security company that's doing the contracting and carrying the bond, okay. or they're carrying an individual personal bond. But there's a fee, a $50 fee and a licensing thing that goes through that they have to go through my office to get. So, Chief? Yes. Um, I had the opportunity to go through the security protocol that Mr. Weber uh, emailed to me. Mm -hmm. And I had an opportunity to go up there as well. And I walked around the building. Um, I didn't see, and based on what you put here on this protocol, I didn't see any cameras 
or any evidence that there were ever any cameras on the outside of the building. Well, but here, here, he states he correct camera exists. Yes. Which seems to be very misleading. Yes. Yes. Four, the four outside of Downton and Six. 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 Six.
the chair is actually cooks it there. I, I haven't gone up and actually inspected it myself. I have no idea what they're, if they have a working kitchen or not. Well, this runs out in 30 days. Less than 30 days. They've never had a kitchen. That runs out March 1st. Yeah. 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 It's pretty much out of the channel. I did verify with Chief Kevin Lunas, the fire chief, that the occupancy thing was correct as far as 252 people seemed like a lot to me, but he said that based on the it has to be all done by right. square footage, correct? I, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, and then what that entitles the you know, limited suppression system. Mm -hmm. Is that something that's been installed? Mm -hmm. yeah. there are no, there was actually a uh, variant that was issued by the West mm -hmm. Commission. What, Fussner? Mm -hmm. With the blessing of the OBC. I got a question. Are these private lounges allowed? down here where they have these private lounges. Is that a fire hazard? Mm -hmm. You're down, huh? It is not? In the basement? No, no, no exit. No, it doesn't say Everybody's in the basement. Ground. Ground. It's 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 the first, first floor. I don't think they open until the end of the day. Right. It's, 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 I mean, I got to go based on what he wrote and what he sent in. And so if I go on that, it's misleading and it doesn't tell the facts. I'm a black and white guy. It's, it says it has cameras on the exterior building. We'll start with that. This to me, everything written after that or before that is null and void to me. But I'd have to ask my lawyer friend here to see what she says about that. <laughs> well, better than that, I think that's a good appropriate question to see if it's addressed by the end. I mean, because like, he, like this gentleman here said, he drove by, he didn't see any. I drove by, I'm a builder. I didn't see any holes, I didn't see anything that Remotely had cameras prior to that. There was nothing there. Oh, yeah. I'm very yeah. thrilled yeah. when I look at it. Mm -hmm. See the wind blown out in the front. Yeah, it's been. It's, it's, it's bad. It's the building looks bad. I know. I even went next door and talked to the other business owner. The and the shop next door. And you know, he, he really had no comment. Really, <laughs> they're all afraid of it. You know, a lot of times people they don't want to really talk. Or, yeah, I mean it's you know. You know you know, I try to be as courteous as I could. I'm not here. I'm not after you. Know. So I'll just make a fair decision. So how are you doing? Good. How are you? Any, any, um, we, we do have, we do have the other case too. We got the car wash. Right. That's okay with I'm okay with I'm okay with you. All the ladies got their socks. That's always a good thing. Let's see. I don't know where it is. Let's see. 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 Let's see
<laughs> when I was like Google mapping, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. No, he goes, he was like the one with family dollars. <laughs> That's their landmark for sending the guys out there to pick up the tires. <laughs> So if he's uh, the car wash. Then he's asking for the, 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 the car wash, of washing and cleaning cars. To, I mean, I guess one of the conditions would be you can't wash outside. He knows that. Yeah. He, he does know that. Yeah, he does. Everything's inside. Should, should we should we say just make sure we say that? Just I know he said I know what he wrote. Yeah, but it, it, we told several times we've told some people stuff that they can't do and they do it anyway. Yeah, so. I think you may want to make clear because it says right. On the it does say washing outside, outside cleaning yeah, so. inside. It to be clear that all runoff has right. Maybe <laughs> washing outside of the car. I mean, I don't. Know. I'm not. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not clear. clear. That. Yeah, and that's why I just brought it up because it is an issue. And, Let's you know, be clear about what yeah, you're allowed to do yeah, where. OEPA does not want any vehicles washed outside. I mean, they shut down the Boy Scouts at times, but oh. I mean, you, they fix that. Now you can do it if, if it's a charity, but um, a sure. business cannot do that. Okay, bingo. Any other concerns about the car wash? Yeah. And then the weeds on Well, there's just got to be a lot of, there's going to be many questions, I think. And, you know what I think? My experience with the law, you know, you come before the court with clean hands. If you have unclean hands, then it, it initiated, you'd be in the first place. You know, you're familiar with it. Mm -hmm. You can't come back and say, well, I'm going to sue you because you, you didn't do me properly or you didn't do me the same way you did my neighbor. But you can't enforce my unclean hands. And you're asking the court to defend my unclean hands. You know, so I think we got to. Mr. Brown, if, uh, if we say no, what's the next step? You wouldn't advise us to say no, probably. On which case? The, the lounge. Well, you know, the, the difficulty you have as a commission is that the law permits a conditional use application for this type of business. So the only thing you can do is throw criteria at them, which candidly is exactly what I and I, I took the lead on it. I asked for a security protocol to be presented, which they did. I asked for a business plan to be presented, which they did. I asked for security cameras after discussing it with the police department to enhance their ability to handle situations up there and to investigate altercations. And uh, I, I, I've talked to them more recently than you. It would be up to you to make an inquiry as to why that may perhaps is incomplete and why that wasn't functional this Saturday. Certainly the police department did a follow-up investigation once they received the protocol. I sent it to them as soon as I received it. Um, if the conditions are met for the conditional use operation, it's a very difficult thing to turn down. You can't rewrite your code just because you don't like what the code says. And the code allows taverns in this district um, I'm not in favor of that. I'm sure the police uh, chief's uh, hand would probably go up. They're problematic to the community, but that requires a rewrite. I've spoken to members of council about trying to get that established so that maybe we can't get it rewritten for this particular applicant or for our bar or for other places in town, but certainly for subsequent applications, they wouldn't be permitted. I think it's appropriate that you guys get a comfort level here, though. I'm not going to dictate what you do. If you're not happy that the cameras aren't there and working, that's a legitimate concern. It doesn't uh, qualify with their protocol. It's not enacted yet. That could be a contingency to permit them to get their conditional use operation. My suggestion at that point in time would they could continue this for a time period with their consent. If they weren't to consent, you can base it on information that you have presented today. And, and I think it's clear that the cameras are not on the outside of this building. From my most recent conversation with their legal counsel an hour and a half ago. Okay, and it, that was something I was told was weather uh, continuing. Yeah, it's nothing to do with weather permitting. It's something that I do for, for my company. And, and 
too. I can do that in a blizzard. There's certainly be a valid inquiry that you can make. No, I, I believe me, I will. Yeah. Because, because that's the reason that I was given, and now you have that information. Yeah, like I said, I just had some yeah. few weeks ago. It was cold out. Ten different workers. Can I just say, we can council. deny a conditional use permit based on health, safety, and welfare of the surrounding community, and if nothing else, I think just the copy of the call logs and the amount of police activity having to be out to this location is definitely a detriment. Um, and I hope you don't listen Number two, the, the, the safety protocol business plan that were submitted are far, fall far below industry standards in the area of lounge management. I, my parents were restaurant bar owners, food, food operators, their menu, their food or service below puck protocol safety not even close to what this type of lounge would require um it, i mean it, it would take 30 seconds on the and, and a google search for them to have put together a better s security plan much less actually consulted uh, you know this is pretty bad and i think their record speaks for itself that it's not working at all um but with that in mind again our code says you know Impair value of surrounding areas, negative impact on the area, health, safety, and welfare. Yes. Our criteria for us issuing a conditional use. Um, but again, I think it's a big thing has to do with consent. If we do decide to give them any time to put up the cameras, implement a better plan. You know, our code is very specific, and then we have to approve or disapprove within 60 days of this hearing. We cannot let it go unconditionally without their, cons you know and just say we're going to call you back in 60 days, we need them to either wait the time for a decision or have that decision up or down within 60 if they're not consenting. Well, to clearly, so everybody knows, and I've said this, but I don't know if you were here. I might have missed that. At the liquor control hearing, I told them that it would really help a lot if you could cut down on the number of calls that the police department was involved in that involved your establishment. I don't think that's the testimony of our police chief today. I mean, it's like anything at the end of the day when you have a problem and you keep having problems, you go to rectify the problem. You try to fix that problem. So I see all these police calls and all these, uh, you know, calls to the, to the establishment and you would think that, well, on this date when we had the second incident, we, we didn't put cameras in. Then on the third incident, after that, then we did, we had security step in. Then when we had this, but they waited till we stepped in and made them or insisted that they have. To me, anybody that's running a business and seeing that it's failing in one area and you don't fix it, and it is affecting the neighborhood and it is affecting our police department, and it's affecting the, the value of your home over there, all those things matter. So to me, to not have those cameras up after all those incidences and everything else, I mean, a camera system costs five hundred fifty dollars. Right. It might cost you the same to install it by a professional. So somebody that's running a business and can't spend eleven hundred dollars for the safety of their clientele and the safety of the community, right. <laughs> they don't get much love from me. So that's that's how I'm going to stand. Richard, this is in your district. What you, it is. What are you going to say? Um, I mean, looking at this from April first of twenty fourteen through February second of this year, there's been fifty one service calls for the police to come out from any to work from all types of violence, drugs, auto theft, uh, disorderly conduct, you name it, it's happened there. And looking at their history, because I think that's a good way of looking at the business, they I would deny them um, the applicants their uh, conditional permit to continue. It's a detriment to the community. Um, I don't see any positive benefit from allowing this business in my district. No one, none whatsoever. And I mean, they've had an ample opportunity to take ownership of the situation, to address it, and they've been negligent. It's a nuisance. And I mean, we have enough issues in this city. It's a drain on our police and our safety forces. So seeing that this business is not a responsible business in the community, why would we want to continue to have this business be a detriment to the surrounding community and on our resources. And so I would uh, argue for this commission to vote no. Thank you. Okay. Thank Good. you for your input. Are we ready to go up? Yes. Yeah. Yeah.